even though I'm probably seeing all these places for like the zillion time, I'm gonna try my best to act like a tourist and pretend I'm seeing it all for the first time. I'm just very curious to see where exactly these tour groups would take you to if you sign up to one of them. So if you guys wanna sign up for one of these tours in the future and thinking of visiting LA, then this is the episode for you because I'm gonna show you all the spots that a typical uh, tour group takes you to all around Los Angeles so you can make an informed decision on whether you want to take the tour yourself. If you enjoy what I'm doing here on this channel, then please subscribe to this channel because I release these food and travel videos weekly that you don't want to miss out on. So go ahead, do that right now. And uh, it is pretty early in the morning, so I got to get going so I don't miss the tour bus. It looks like the meeting point is here in Santa Monica. I had to travel far to get here. Yeah, Santa Monica is definitely one of the spots you need to check out as a tourist. I'm pretty sure I know where they're gonna take me in this part of town. Anyways, the tour that I signed up for is this tour that's called A Day in LA Tours. Now keep in mind, this is just one of few different tours that you can be a part of as part of this LA tour. But I heard a lot of great things about this company, very highly rated. So if you guys are looking for a tour group, in LA, then you can definitely use this one, A Day in LA Tours, which you can go to the video description so that you can click on the link and sign up for your tour when you come to Los Angeles. I'm a little bit early, but I guess, hey, actually I see it, it's right over there. Yes, oh, it's here. This is gonna be a long day. It's gonna go from like 9.30ish to Somewhere around five, so yeah, this is really no joke. It's like an all day thing. And there's a lot of people on this bus, people from all over the world. That's incredible. I think I'm the only person here from Los Angeles, I think. First stop, Santa Monica Pier. I am here at Santa Monica Pier for the 20th time in my life. <laughs> How exciting. No, actually not really, but you know, it's always good to come back to this pier to kind of see it from a different angle this time. And yes, Santa Monica Pier is definitely one of the go-to tourist spots that you must visit in Los Angeles. California is definitely known for its beaches and piers. Santa Monica Pier is one of the most famous ones where you can fish, where you can eat some pretty nice seafood out here. Uh, they shot movies like Forrest Gump here. Uh, they are their gift shops a lot of souvenir shops and stands just kind of everywhere and then there are fishing spots yeah a little bit of everything for everybody yes there are arcades too for kids it looks like i reached the end of the pier so it goes all the way down and then you can go down some steps too so that you can get to the tip of the ocean from the Santa Monica Pier. And this is the area where you pretty much do all the fishing or maybe get a nice view of the ocean. But yeah, you get about 30 minutes at this spot. It seems like a lot, but time flies when you're having so much fun, right? So I gotta head back to the bus and get to my next location. The next stop is Venice Boardwalk. Now this is kind of predictable. Uh, it's definitely somewhere that you should check out, especially if you want to go the beach route. And it's so close to Santa Monica too, so it's very convenient. And this spot I haven't been to in so many years, maybe like at least 20 or 25 years, something like that. I mean, I've been here a few times when I was a kid, but there, you know, I just had no really, not too much reason to come back, but I guess now, Thanks to my tour, I'm back here exploring it all, almost like for the first time as a tourist. One thing you'll notice about Venice Beach is that it's a very, um, at least when I was a kid, I thought it was kind of like a wild party of a beach area. It's very artist influenced. So you're gonna see a lot of murals all around here, a lot of paintings where a lot of artists hang out, a lot of skate parks as well. Of course, they're gonna have their foods, you know, here and there. This is the main area that I'm walking down right now called Venice Boardwalk. This is where all the action is pretty much at. 
Now here's a pretty interesting spot. This is called Muscle Beach, this area where all the big bodybuilders work out. Never seen it before. I've seen it in a lot of videos before, but it is in this section where you can watch all the best bodybuilders kind of do their craft here. I don't really know how many of them do it right now these days, but before there were a lot of them here. So maybe you can see them if you come on a crowded day. When I came to Venice before, it was usually pretty sunny and a lot of people here, but today not quite as crowded, which is a good thing. But it's pretty simple when you walk down this boardwalk, souvenir shops, gift shops, food, uh, sports activity, you know, it just kind of depends on what interests you. So of course, Venice Beach has the actual beach itself where you can hang out, sunbathe, swim. It's all this beautiful space right behind me. Isn't it so gorgeous? If it were sunnier, I bet it would look a lot better. And then also to my left hand side, this is the famous skate park where if you are a skater, you're going to have a blast at this place. You can just skate all you want in this section right here. For some reason, there's really not too many of them here today, but usually it is filled up on a pretty good day. So Venice Beach just, it screams California. This is what you think about when you think of California, especially the beaches in the Los Angeles area. But there's more I need to show you. So let's go to the next spot. Our next stop in Beverly Hills. Yes, this is an area that I've been to a few times, although I don't come out here that often because this is a very expensive area. This is like one of the most expensive shopping areas in the entire world. And yes, the most expensive homes in Los Angeles is right here in Beverly Hills. So you bet a lot of movie stars and a lot of rich people live in this area. But if you come to Beverly Hills, there is a specific spot that you gotta check out, which is Rodeo Drive. Of course, maybe some of you guys have heard about it already. This is where all of the shops like Gucci, you know, high-end places, this is all right here. As I said, there are a lot of designer stores out here in Beverly Hills. One of them is quite shocking, the House of Dijon, which has this beautiful Rolls Royce just sitting out here on the street where you can take pictures of it. Please don't rob it, it's out here for show. This store is crazy because their cheapest suit here, custom made, is like $15,000 for one suit. And if you get the most expensive, it could run over $100,000 for a suit. And they have done suits for US presidences in the past. Like I said, if you got a lot of money, you wanna burn it here in LA, this is the place you gotta be in Los Angeles. So if you guys see behind me, that's the famous Rodeo Drive walkway that all the tourists go to. Definitely, I'm gonna check this out in just a bit. If you walk through this magical little path, you really feel like you're walking through Europe in its architecture, its design, and yes, a lot of high-end stores are right in there. So let's go check it out. I've always wondered, do people actually shop in these stores and drop hundreds if not thousands of dollars to shop here? Some people do, mostly tourists, but I learned a little fact today that a lot of these stores that have been here for years, like Versace, Gucci, um, you know, Rolex, all these fancy stores, they actually go at a loss. They don't actually make a lot of money. That's why when you walk by them, so many of them are so empty all the time. So why would they take a loss? Well, just because they just wanna stay on Beverly Hills and just have the image of being there. Most of Beverly Hills Rodeo Drive is just gonna be walking around. It's for the shoppers person. I mean, me personally, I'm not that into shopping, so I guess once is enough walking around here. But hey, if you're into shopping, then you can walk all day around these blocks and see so many stores and have at it. Well, I am hungry right now. So the next stop, thankfully, I'm gonna get some lunch. Let's go. And by the way, this is such a cool tour bus and the guide is awesome too because he really guides you on all these different trivias as you're driving like different monuments and buildings telling you the history about it all these fun facts 
you're gonna be entertained all the way through. So there's really never a dull moment on this tour. It looks like the next stop is going to be the farmer's market. I knew it was gonna be either one of two places. It was either gonna be farmers here in West LA or in downtown LA at Grand Central Market. But either way, it's fine. This place is so good because they have a lot of different kinds of foods here at farmer's market. They have a lot of fresh produce so you can shop for your fruits and for your nuts and vegetables, but they have a lot of nice restaurants that you can just pick whatever you want and sit outdoors. I admit guys, it could be very overwhelming to try to figure out where exactly to eat at the farmer's market. I've been to a few of these different restaurants, but one of them I can tell you is a safe bet, especially if you're into meats, is Pampa's Grill, which is Brazilian style barbecue. It's cafeteria style, so you get in line, you pick out the vegetables, appetizers, as well as slices of meat. They would weigh it, and then that's how much they would charge you. This, you can tell, it's very popular because the line is very long, especially during lunchtime. So don't miss out on this if you want to um, basically eat some really good food here at Farmer's Market. The line obviously begins with the vegetables, like potato salad, Caesar salad, got some beet salad. I definitely should get some vegetables. You gotta have some vegetables with your meat, right? You can't do all meat. So they cut it in front of you and then they weigh it and that's how much they charge. So this is not all you can eat. You gotta pay for how much you got. Oh, next one, top sirloin. How many live ones? One is fine. Garlic beef, yes. And then some chicken. In Thai how many ones? Two, please. Garlic chicken, all right, garlic chicken, full plate. So if you guys have been to restaurants like Fogo de Chao before, you kind of know what this food is like. It, they have pretty much that Brazilian thing going on here at the farmer's market, and I am so excited for some of the foods I got here today. Now, don't fill up too much, guys, on the, on the appetizer, because you really want to get your money's worth in the meat. And by the way, they do have two different options. You can go just with the salad option, or you can do the combination of the salad and the meats. Mm. That is so delicious. Especially if you are a meat lover, this is the place you gotta be. There's a lot of other great restaurants in the farmer's market. I've been to a few. You've seen it in Rockstar Eater in the past, but this one, you can't go wrong with it, especially if you love meat and salad, Brazilian style, then really Pampas Grill is the place you gotta be. So if you're in one of these stores, you're walking around, you don't know which restaurant to go to, don't double think it. Choose Pampas Grill, because this is the spot that everybody goes to for some delicious salad and delicious meats here at the farmer's market. So here's the actual produce itself. When you come to the farmer's market, it's not just about restaurants and desserts, they have the produce here. All the vegetables, all the fruits, like the oranges and the apples. Yes, it is a good place to get some delicious organic foods. And in LA, organic foods is definitely the way to go. Yes, the farmer's market definitely has my thumbs up. It's really one of the go-to places for food. I like it coming here all the time. And just to let you guys know that Next door to Farmer's Market, there's a shopping center called The Grove, which is one of the biggest, most popular outdoor shopping malls in Los Angeles. So if you have time to go next door to The Grove, definitely do it. I don't have time today because I gotta get back on the tour bus in just a bit, but it is definitely worth seeing, especially if you are into shopping malls. <laughs> Guys, this is something pretty cool. I just met William right here. He follows me on Rockstar Eater. It happens from time to time when they recognize me. So yeah, good man right here. Yeah, thank Thanks you. so much, yeah, William. Nice meeting you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really enjoy your videos, so. <laughs> okay. Another one of the landmark spots here in LA to visit is the famous Griffith Observatory. This is a spot I have not been to since I was a kid. Unfortunately, the Griffith Park Observatory is closed as of right now. Hopefully it'll open up soon, but at least up here you can take some pictures, some aerial shots of LA. And unfortunately, it's a cloudy day today, so you can barely see anything, but Still, let's see uh, what, what we can see from up here. In the distance, Hollywood sign right there. You can kind of see it. 
I'm not going to actually go to the sign as part of this tour, but there are other tours that I think will take you out to the Hollywood sign. But this is good enough for me. It might be a little bit hard to see, but way off in the distance, that's where downtown LA is at. Uh, that's another area that could be worth seeing, especially if you're into very urban cities. I don't think I'm gonna be going there today, but um, just letting you know that from up here, you can see downtown, you can see all of Los Angeles, which is a pretty nice view. It's one of the nicest view of LA that you can get. I think I'm pretty much done here. We can definitely move on because all you gotta do is just shoot some stuff up here, take your pictures and that's it. Let's move on to our next spot. Last stop, we are in Hollywood. This is the absolute biggest tourist attraction in Los Angeles. Everybody wants to come to Hollywood Boulevard when they are in LA. And yes, it is a place you definitely should check out, especially if you've never been to LA before, never been to Hollywood Boulevard because there's quite a lot of things to see here. This is where they have all these movie premieres at the Chinese Theater, El Capitan Theater, and Kodak Theater, you know where they have the Oscars. They got street performers here. They got a lot of great restaurants going on here as well. I mean, this is like almost like the Las Vegas Strip of Los Angeles. So let me just show you some of the things that are around here. And then here is the Dolby Theater. Yes, this is where they have, I guess, the Oscar Awards every year. You see the display of all the best picture winners over the years on this kind of like a wall of fame. It's pretty nice. Ooh, I like the stairway. It's gonna go up into the Dolby Theater. And growing up, I was a very big movie fan, so I would always tune into the Oscars every single year, watch all the best picture, nominated films, be following and all that stuff. So I was totally into stuff like this before. As you can tell, there are stores like Dodgers, Hot Topic, yeah. There are definitely clothing stores, merchandise stores up here. They are definitely building something because this wasn't here when I saw it about 10 years ago. So on Hollywood and Highland, you can continue to walk eastward. There's more stuff to see, a lot of more restaurants, souvenir shops. And then you're also gonna see the wax museums here. I've not been to any of these wax museums before. I will someday, but yeah, a lot of people love to go to these wax museums and see this exact replica of celebrities. It's too bad I can't show you all what this street looks like at nighttime because it glitters at nighttime, almost like the Las Vegas Strip. This is uh, still, I mean, during the day, it looks pretty good. There's a, a lot of activity going on on the street. And before I end here on Hollywood Boulevard, there is a pretty cool gift shop up here called La La Land Souvenirs, which has a lot of things. I definitely want to check this out since I'm already here anyways. Let's check it out. When you're at gift shops like this, there's only one place you're going to get an Oscar award. Closest thing to getting it is getting it at a gift shop if you don't win the real thing. This is pretty interesting. See, like athlete of the year, kid of the year, and that's nice, best husband, dancer. Like any typical gift shops, they'll also have cups, sometimes with your name on it. And then typical of LA souvenir shops is all these cheap sunglasses. Oh yeah, I am convinced. La La Land, this is the merchandise store you got to be at in Hollywood Boulevard. There are quite a lot of them around on Hollywood Boulevard. A lot of them are kind of on the tacky side. This place is pretty cool. It's huge. They got a nice light show going on in here. They have merchandise of all kinds. So definitely bring your money here so that you can buy whatever it is you want. Take, take it back with you as a souvenir of your trip to Hollywood, the entertainment capital of the world. So the tour is officially over. It is close to 5.30 and we are back in Santa Monica at my starting point. It looks like it happened so fast. Yeah, those eight hours went by so 
fast. I saw so much stuff during that time. And let me tell you, even though I've been to these spots quite a few times, it felt really exciting. It was very nice. And it was all thanks to the tour guy who made it so fun because he told us stuff that a lot of which I didn't even know about growing up in LA. A lot of fun trivia and facts. Like I said, there was never a dull moment on this trip. So definitely, if you guys are looking for a really great tour in Los Angeles, if you're planning to visit the city and you want to hit up all the hot spots, then remember, a day in LA tours. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this episode, guys. Give me a thumbs up. Also comment on the section below if you've liked anything that you've seen. I'd love to hear your story and subscribe so they can get these food and travel videos weekly. Well, I hope you have a rocking day today, folks, and that you will sign up for this rocking tour sometime soon. And let me see, maybe I will look for something to eat in Santa Monica to close out the night. After all, there are a lot of great restaurants in Santa Monica. So I'll see you guys in the next video.